and out from the crowd. Let's see what else I've got. I think that's it. Those are the three that I've got. All right, so hopefully this was actually recording just in case it wasn't. Once again, I'm Ryan Skills, known as the Millionaire Marketing Mentor, George. That's right, the Millionaire Marketing Mentor. I'll tell you why in just a moment. But we're going to talk about, this is sort of supposed to be an AMA, which I guess in an internet marketing millennial language stands ask me anything. So hopefully you guys will chime in and ladies chime in and ask me something. Please ask me a question. All right. Anyway, George chimed in and said, hey, what's with the millionaire marketing mentor? Why is it? By the way, George, you've known me for so long, putting me on the spot like this. What are you doing? What are you doing, dude? Anyway, I'll tell you why I call myself this. I will uh, give you ideas how to make a million bucks a year as a coach consultant. And I'll talk about how to stand out from the crowd. I think those three things will keep me busy for about 20 minutes or so. Now, Cricket, if you're back watching this, I seriously was just in my uh, downstairs. My office is upstairs in my house. I was just downstairs. We just kicked off one of our Revenue Revenue Intensive games. Game number 15. Yes. What a group. Um, we just kicked it off and I looked at boy, it's 3 p.m. But you know what? Maybe I should grab myself some wine. I grabbed myself a cup of Joe with my favorite, one of my favorite mugs from Le Petit Prince in France. And Cricket is here. All right. So I uh, thought, how about some, something to drink aside from uh, my favorite cup of Joe? But then I thought, I don't feel like wine. And if I pour myself a margarita or just tequila and tonic, it's a little too hard liquor for 3 p.m. I know it's 6 p.m. somewhere and later, but still, plus I have a party to go to later on. I don't want to be too happy. Anyway, if you're watching this live, I would love to um, hear your ahas. What are you, what are you dialing from? What are you looking for? If you've got a marketing question, chime in. If you're watching this on replay, uh, same thing. Where are you dialing from? Where are you watching this from? And if you've got a question, chime in. I will use it for my next. AMA or whatever the next lesson. So look, let's talk about this, all right? How do you stand out from the crowd? Why do I call myself what I call myself? And um, how just how can you make a bunch of money in your business as a coach, as a consultant, as a service professional? Very simple stuff. All right, I'm getting some likes. Who's liking me? Cricket is liking me <laughs> with my wine. <laughs> Love it. Bo is sending me some likes. I appreciate this. Where do I start with this? You know, every market eventually matures and gets busy. And you've got to, if you, bl if you blend in and you are vanilla and blend in and uh, you will have a hard time making money. You'll have a hard time breaking through, standing out, generating attention, getting interest in the marketplace, right? You just, you, you've got to break out. So the other day I made a post, how not to be boring. And I talk about just simple formula, which is you've got to be clear what it is that you do excuse me, how do you provide transformation for people, right? What are you on the mission for? So for example, I chose marketing training as my vehicle, but what I'm ultimately passionate about is transforming entrepreneurial lives. In fact, my big old mission is eradicating entrepreneurial failure by helping people think more entrepreneurially, helping business owners really be entrepreneurial, think creatively, know how to create value in the marketplace using their unique super strength, super genius. All right, so that's one, right? Uh, second thing is, what are you, so now once you know what, are you, what, what kind of transformation you provide, the second thing is, uh, you know, what are you passionate for? What are you passionate about? So I'm passionate about, you know, really transforming people's lives, really making a difference, impacting, delivering solutions that actually work. And then what do you, uh, what do you, what do you hate? What are you passionately against? You're not against stupidity, laziness, you know, something for nothingness. Um, I am against uh, bullshit, compl complexity, have troops that make you think that something works when it really doesn't work, you know, kind of like this alpha omega today, you know, the, uh, the funnel things, that's hence my, you know, after funnels approach, I stand against something, right? Um, and so what happens is you now have a mission, you now stand for something and you stand against something else. So it allows people to self-select themselves. Hey, I like his, I like where this guy is going and I like his approach and I like what he's passionate about. I resonate with this. And some of the people say, you know, I hate with a vengeance what he is passionate about. And, you know, I don't like that, he's, that he hates some other things. Therefore, I want to deselect myself. Perfect. You're now building your tribe. Your vibe will attract your tribe. Now you have AKA personality. You stand out. I'll talk a little bit 
um, about some other things as well, but this is important. So now, you know, when you've got this personality, how the hell do you stand out in a busy marketplace? Well, I found the best, once you have those basic tools, you know what you stand for, you know what your mission is, you know who your enemies are, right? Or your appointed, anointed enemies. And then you want to ask yourself, how do I grab attention? And for me, uh, I found the best tool is controversy, right? Just become controversial. So that's easy said. How do you actually apply this? So I'm going to give you some basic tactics here. I'll make a few basic notes for myself as always. You know, I found, I found something very unique. Um, I have amazing friends from all walks of life, right? Uh, white, yellow, orange, black, um, brown, gray, <laughs> Catholics, Muslims, Jews, um, those who celebrate festivals for the rest of us. I mean, like all sorts of ethnicity, religions, colors, creeds, nationalities galore. And I find it fascinating when I get with people one on one, they're amazing. Like as individuals, we are just amazing. We're intelligent. We think we engage in conversations. We are curious about the other person, at least my friends. Right. But then fascinating thing happens when we get in groups of likes. We start displaying group behavior, mob mentality. We become stupefied and exhibit typical, stereotypical behaviors. You know, so all Polacks get to be Polacks and all Blacks start acting like Blacks and Yellows start acting like Yellows and whatever. And, you know, th look, this isn't about race and offending anybody. You know, Catholics get, get religious and Jews get Jews. It's like amazing what happens. We start developing this, this biopic, stereotypical thinking. Same thing happens with groups, you know, like our groups, fastest path to cash. I bet I can see it because I'm in it, but I bet someone would come from the outside and observe immediately how we display a certain stereotypical behavior. So I go to other groups where my market is consultants and coaches, and I immediately can see stereotypical behaviors as a group. So it's very easy for me to become controversial and, you know, by simply thinking differently and stating my opinion. Right. So I can claim my expertise because I know what I stand, what what my mission is, what how I provide the difference. Right. Then I talk about my passions, what I stand for, what I believe in. And then I talk about my enemies, what I hate and what I stand against. Now, that immediately stirs things up. And if you've been along me long enough, you know that I typically practice a couple of approaches. One is called a shit stir, which is I may start a post uh, or contribute to someone else's post in such a way that really mess, messes with people's heads. It's controversial. It's like, you know, everybody goes like, oh, some people will hate it, some will love it. It stirs up a conversation. And the second type of the post is conversation stopper, which is I will essentially just write such a complete answer to someone's question or post that there's nothing left to say. Anybody that's going to com come in, it's going to essentially look like an idiot. There's just no way to top it, right? It's my area of expertise, and I'm going to absolutely claim it. And I do it on purpose. I realize I'm killing the conversation. I want it, all right? I wait for the conversation to go to a certain level, and then I go, okay, all right, let's go in there. Let's do my magic showstopper, conversation stopper. This is my game now, all right? Now, what happens, many of you watching this, if you're in this group, man, if, if I could just you know, show you a screenshot of some people that apply to be in the group and the comments they make, they actually specifically reference like, wow, the comment you made or the post you made it's like, I'll be an idiot not to come and pay attention to you. That's exactly what I want. I want people to self-select themselves with my vibe, all right? So that's a little bit about standing out and so on. Now, another way to stand out is actually how do you name yourself? So, by the way, whether you're watching with me live, all right, George is here. Awesome. George, I'm coming to, to your question. Perfect. Whether you're watching this live or watching the recording, what I would love to know at this point is tell me, make a comment. What do you call yourself? What's them, what, are you, what did you anoint yourself to be, anoint yourself to be in your business? So before I even get to the name, this is something that's very important. Uh, again, um, if you've been around Adam Urbanski long enough, you know that I'm a high school graduate. I never went to college. My wife is very well educated. In fact, when I started my consulting practice in the year 2000, um, for the, the next first five years in business, my, all my, essentially all my clients, my hired clients, were people with at least one PhD, often multiple PhDs, like in psychology, organizational development, 
um, or something like this, right? And uh, they were exiting corporate careers, wanting to start their own uh, consulting coaching businesses, right? So they were very highly educated. Here I am, a, 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 a high school grad. That's it. That's all I've got, right? With a broken English. And I always caution them that because of where they come from, which is very high achievement in academic world and significant achievement in corporate world, because of that background, they will have a hard time breaking out as an entrepreneur because they always waited for someone else to give them permission. You know, in academic world, you can't call yourself an MBA until you, until you pass the test. They give you the MBA. You can't be a PhD until you go to school, learn, pass the test, write your thesis, defend it, blah, blah, blah. Now you get a PhD. Essentially, it's a bunch of, I call it a bunch of asses, people like you and I, that at one point decided, look, we achieved certain status. We got to defend that status because that's our status quo. And if everybody becomes and, and claims that they have what we have, then we are not any better. So in order for us to stay above and keep others below, a bunch of us has got together and said, okay, no, 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 no. Nobody else can enter and be at the same level that we are until we say it's okay for them. And in order for us to say it's okay, we're going to put them through a bunch of hoops. Tell, tell them it's going to take many years, charge them a boatload of money, put a bunch of difficulties in there. All of them completely arbitrarily decided stuff. So, look, I don't have this. I actually have a lot of disdain for titles. I don't have disdain for the work that goes into the, to achieve it. So I have a lot of admirations for, for someone that puts themselves to go through MBA and PhD. But just to get a title, I don't give a fuzzy red state about a title. It's, it's totally useless. So entrepreneurs, where we differ, we don't wait for permission. We anoint ourselves something and then prove it. So when I started my consulting business in the year 2000, I actually don't think I came up with a marketing mentor until 2001. Uh, and it was, uh, I started my coaching practice and I called it something different. I called it Inside Development Group. In fact, I still have the domain Inside, like Inside the Riot, InsideDG.com. It was a nice short domain. I still have it. In fact, I just got an email from Irvine Chamber of Commerce that came into uh, like my wife's address, Boski at InsideDG.com. Uh, I'm like, where the hell did they find that email? But I've got a catch all on that domain and catch all meaning whatever is sent, it's filtered to one box. I was looking at something and this one stood out. It just came in like two days ago, just when I looked for in my inbox. I'm like, wow, that is funny. It must have been like 15 years since I belonged to the chamber, since I've been there. And there's an email coming from them to my InsideDG.com email address. Anyway, I was inside development group. I was a business coach. Now, if you know much about the history of coaching, in 2000, 2000, 2001, coaching industry ex experienced kind of the first breakthrough boom where, oh my God, life coaches, business coaches started, people have to start coach calling themselves coaches and became a profession. And as I looked at what I wanted to do and what people were calling themselves as I was meeting people, I realized, number one, I'm not a coach. Number two, there is a clusterfuck of coaches out there and I don't want to be one of them. So I need to have something that's different. And I know that I want to do marketing. And I looked at my background of running, buying, growing, and selling companies, right? At the heyday, my last restaurant business made over seven figures a year. Yes, that's revenues, George, not profits, all right? Re uh, restaurants don't have that big of a profit margin, but we did all right. Uh, so... I sold that business, right? Became a consultant coach, and now I needed to have a name. And I'm like, you know what? I want to do marketing, and I'll be pe I'll be mentoring people in marketing. Why mentoring? Because I've been there and done that. I'm not coaching people through something. You know, mentor is someone who opens doors, explore possibilities. It's a combination of consulting, coaching, training, right? I open doors, I analyze the situation, uh, map out possible paths can tell you scenarios where each one may likely take you. So hence, it became the mentor. At the time, yeah, there were a couple of people that were calling themselves mentor, highly unusual, and they were not official titles. So we actually trademarked the term marketing mentor. Yes, it's trademark. And there's been a number of cases where we went after people and defended the trademark successfully because, well, trademark is trademark. So if you want to be doing marketing whatever and call yourself a marketing mentor, you may be shit out of luck because if you step on my toes, we'll send you a nice cease and desist letter 
then you will be legally forced to stop. Sorry for claiming that. I'm an asshole for that. Bite me, all right? Just like an entrepreneur magazine claimed the term entrepreneur magazine, they claimed the term entrepreneur bootcamp or small business bootcamp or something like this. You can't do this, right? You can't, you can't start a magazine and call it entrepreneur publication. They claimed it, right? Yeah, I know it's a common term. Like what? In that specific arena, they've got exclusivity. So I did my marketing mentor. Now, a couple of interesting things happened. Number one, my own, but so first of all, I stood out. I was no longer a coach. What do you do? You're a marketing mentor. Like, oh, very cool. I could use one. You know, what, what, how does that work? How do you work with people? So it, it was different. It allowed me to stand out just by the name and all. But a couple of interesting ha thing ha things happened. Number one is our business crossed the seven figures in revenues. Again, uh, and George, I'll tell you a little bit about seven figures in a moment, but not everything is profit. However, the way... I run business is very different than most people run consulting businesses. I'm not interested in building a number of employees or uh, locations or fancy stuff. I learned a long time ago that the money you keep is yours to keep versus like, you know, top line is top line, bottom line is bottom line. All right. I'm being vague on purpose because I don't know who is listening, right? And uh, I don't want it to come back to me, bite me in the ass on my taxes or other asset protection things. Anyway, so when we crossed seven figures for the first time in the consulting, coaching, slash training business, that uh, I still call myself marketing mentor. And then another interesting thing happened, which is uh, a number of my clients transitioned from when they first came to us, which were either startup five figures or maybe very low six figures. They transitioned to seven figures. Uh, we added the millionaire qualifier to the marketing mentor. So I became a millionaire marketing mentor. Again, we, we have not trademarked that one. Uh, we probably could, but at the same time, you, can, you really can't touch the marketing mentor. So there's no point of adding a qualifier trademark. We could. Um, so, you know, I had a couple of clients who became, um, who graduate clients who were, uh, who were featured on an ABC hit show, The Secret, Mil Secret Millionaire. Yep. I got that to my title. Now, uh, unfortunately, with one semi with the other i've got an nda so i can't quite disclose you know what we did and how we did and, and even the names i'm sometimes scaffold but i got that to my credit i can claim that all right so that's we became you know i i claim the term millionaire marketing mentor uh it's not important how much you make gross sales what's more important how much you keep yep that's ultimately the bottom line right so um Let's see what else. All right, so what's why am I telling you this? Because what's important is that you come up with a name of yourself. So if you listen on this, I would love for you guys and ladies to type in, what do you call yourself? What's your name? I mean, claim an area, claim a title. And then, you know, when I first claimed my title, Marketing Mentor in 2001, uh, we renamed my company. I've got to tell you, I've had a lot of mental baggage because, hey, there are guys like Jay Abraham, one of my mentors, right? I didn't call him a mentor back then. I called him my coach or my, you know, my mentor. Uh, then the, the good old Dan Kennedy. I owe these guys a lot of gratitude for, you know, paving the path, for teaching what they taught. I learned a lot from them, right? And uh, I learned, I implemented, I perfected it for myself, and I teach it in my own way. But back then, they were already, they were already huge. And I was like, well, who the hell am I? I never went to college. I barely speak English. And here I am, you know, Mr. Marketing Mentor. Like, what the hell? But then it made me work even harder to get so good at marketing, to learn everything about it. You know, use my history in, in, in again, buying, growing, selling businesses in the restaurant industry and get even better at becoming really good at direct response marketing, the psychology of marketing, the, the uh, tactology, the, the meaning the tactics and so on, deployment, right? Direct response, it's like everything I possibly could. Uh, I, I know that I've, like even looking at some of my own courses from the past, I've forgotten more stuff than we did than many of the kids coming onto the game, into the game today even know about the marketing game. Anyway, that's the title. So let's talk about revenue. I'm gonna do this, the last thing, unless there's more questions, uh, something different. So let's talk about the last thing. I talk about you know, making a million bucks in uh, as a coach and consultant. So I'm a, I'm a, you know, I talk of, let me just think why I start with this. 
you know, because a lot of my clients uh, go through the program called Revenue Rev Intensive. George, you're a graduate. You were part of it, right? You saw the very first game, as a matter of fact, just today. But this is actually serendipical. Uh, is that the word, serendipical? It is now. We just kicked off game 15. 15. And uh, what is it? 16 is minus. So on average, we were starting about a game a month. We had a few months that we took breaks in between. Like uh, this year, I only started one group earlier. This is only my second group. However, this month we're starting three groups. And now from this point on, we are starting two groups a month, um, at least, right? So crazy acceleration part. But where am I going with it? Um, if you, so I talk to people a lot in the game that it's not about the scale, it's about traction first and then momentum, and then eventually scale, right? But traction is important. Most people can't even get enough traction to get predictable, specific results consistently over a period of time. So that's the first thing we need to establish. That once you get that, then you then you start to start having momentum. Once you have momentum, you go, okay, how do I leverage that momentum into a scalable business? But let me just show you something. Let's say that you want to do uh, a group program of some sort. It's a combination of training, consulting, mentoring, coaching, whatever, right? And you decide to, um, and you figure out a way through that program, how to deliver enough value to the participants of that program that you can charge for it 5,000 bucks, all right? And it doesn't matter what it is that you do. If you do health or fitness or, you know, or, or the relationships, What's important is that you figure out how to deliver enough value to a specific type of audience that they'll be willing to pay you $5,000 for that service, right? And now, so let's say that you want to do this and you run this program. Like in my case, I chose 90-day time frame. Why? It works for me. It helps me to deliver specific results. Um, it, it just works for me, right? I, for what I wanted to do, I decided I need 90 days with my clients to get that first result that I promised. So... Um, let's say that you want to do something similar. So you create a game where you play with people for 90 days or a program where you coach people for 90 days. And let's say that you charge them five grand and you decide, I want to, I want to work with 10 people at a time. All right. So if you start one of those games a month with 10 people for 10 months out of the year, you take two months off, right? Kind of like what we did last year, uh, with the games. Um, you realize it's half a million dollars, right? If you just start one game a month. Now, if you decide to start two games a month, which is very doable, right? Uh, that's a million dollars in revenue. Now, again, in my case, we chose to uh, market in such a way that allows us allowed us for very large profit margins, right? And um, we charge a little bit more than five grand. Plus, we have different levels of the program, so there is even a little bit more revenue coming in. But just, I want to give you a map conceptually, right? So if you do one a month at 5,000, 10 people, that's half a million. If you do two programs a month, 10 people per program, right? 10 months out of the year, it's a million dollars. Now, when you do that, if you figure it out, at one point, you will be running six groups at the same time. All right, that's a lot. That's a lot. You might be able to do it yourself. You might need someone to support you. Like in my case last year, at one point we ran four groups simultaneously. Uh, I was still doing it myself. It was taking me three days a week to do that. Plus I have another day left for marketing and some other things. So that's, you know, that's just one model, one program that can take you to seven figures quite easily with just maybe one assistant. Now, you don't have to do things like I do in groups of 10. You can do things in groups of 15 or 20. You can do things in one group. Um, I discovered it doesn't work. I mean, it worked beautifully for me. I did it for years in the past. It worked beautifully. It made me a fortune. Unfortunately, it sucked for our clients because they all bumbled, gumbled, you know, scrunched together, and they all got lost in the shuffle. They did not get the personalized attention, um, and they just, again, they got lost in the shuffle. Right? It does not work for our clients. So we chose to do it in small groups, eyes on everyone. They can't hide, very high accountability. We've got tracking systems like you wouldn't believe it. 
uh, that allows us to not only see what's happening, but allows us to identify where people run into problems and fix it. I mean, we've got it dialed in after, you know, 14 graduated games. So uh, that's just one model. So again, George, like for you specifically, I'll tell you, like in my business, I actually run under the marketing mentors umbrella. We've got, I've got a consulting part, which is I work with a handful of um, companies that are, I think the, the, the smallest end are about five, $6 million. And they go to about 26, $27 million. That's a purely consulting type. All of this, you know, I, everything that I do is me. So it's mentoring, consulting, coaching, but that's a very sig that's a that's a good chunk of revenue. Very different revenue, right? These are people that have established companies. They have teams. Um, it's different. Then I run my coaching programs, which again the revenue rev up intensive is the one that people see because I talk about it a lot. By the way, we've got I think six spots left for Group 16. If you want to be in it, uh, PM me, email me at Adam and the Marketing Mentors or whatever. You can comment here. Put, just comment uh, rev up and uh, we'll, we'll uh, hook you up with uh, the right info to give you more details on the program. Let's see what else I've got here. Any comments that I'm missing? Cricket, 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 cricket with Hawaiian, and I am with my coffee. Uh, let's see, content is no longer king. Well, content was never king, and I'm gonna come back to that. Anyway, so that's my part, right? We've got a consulting thing. Uh, we've got coaching programs at different levels. I do some work with, privately with clients, uh, very little uh, in the a, in a actual consulting uh, coaching industry because, uh, well, it, it's my annual revenue if I were to break it down hourly. I essentially am uh, I, I'm outpriced for an average coach. Right? An average coach could not afford me. And this is not to say, look, I'm so good and how great I am. Essentially, it's, econ it's economic, right? If my time is worth X, if I sell that time, I have to sell it for X. Otherwise, I'm essentially stealing from myself. Right? It's essentially like if you ask Bill Gates to work for, you know, I don't know, $1,000 an hour, he would go like, dude, you know, for $1,000 an hour, I don't even get out of bed in the morning. I'm making shit up what you get. Like he, our, his, his hourly wages will be so much, it would be unrealistic for him to sell his, his time that way anymore. So it's kind of the same thing with me where I can only work with the highest end of the spectrum in a business in a one-on-one -on -one way. Otherwise, it just it's not... Um, I just wouldn't feel good. I could not make enough impact for someone who is not at a certain level. Anyway, hopefully that's good enough. Uh, let's see, what else can we talk about? So uh, if you're just joining us, I would love to know where you're dialing in from, whether you're live or watching the replay. And I would love to know what you're calling yourself. I would love to know what's your how from all of this. Let's see, uh, George, I love your freedompreneur, by the way, right? So how did you become freedompreneur? Right? Um, do you have complete, absolute, possible freedom in every area of your life? You know, is that is that the case? Probably not. But it's catchy. It stands out. You annoyed yourself this, and now you you work towards this freedompreneurship to justify and prove it that hey, you've got that figured out, right? Uh, Cricket, you've got enough PhDs. Awesome. Good. Well, you know what? Kudos to you for doing the work. I mean, this is beyond me. I could not possibly do that. That would, that would be torturous to me. I love learning. But such structure learning, I love learning. But the minute they say you've got to pass the test to meet my standards, I kind of go like, yeah, you know, whatever. Not going to happen. That was a very rude gesture, by the way, but hopefully you got it. All right, Lisa, just, Lisa, you joined in the perfect timing. Really, just to see that. Thank you very much. Uh, but George said something else here. Uh, let's see, I thought I said something else. Con yeah, King, you know, again, it's like those half-ass sayings. Content is king. No, it's not. It never was king, right? Um, it, it just it was it was it was a winning strategy to get attention for a period of time. Which, by the way, if you ask people like Neil Patel today, and you know maybe Pat Flynn or what's the guy that I teach you to be rich? I forget his name. I mean, there's just a handful of blogs that come to mind where these guys are pumping amazing content. I'll tell you, they'll still say, "Hey, content is king." They're probably getting a shitload of traffic just off the content because they figured out that game. They got good at it. They got a content producing machine. But you take an average person who starts their business today and they try to break into the content, they got to be really strategic and they've got to come, come up with really good controversial angles and really good info. Otherwise, they're screwed. 
It's just if they can, you know, most people's idea of content is king to write is to write 17 blog posts a day and blast them out there. Nope, nope, not going to work. You I missed that boat 10 years ago. All right. Ramif said, there we go. That, that was the name. Thanks, George. Uh, all right. And Jim is here watching. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I think I'm done. I think I'm done. Now I'm going to go and get myself the drink. I need to prepare for my party for tonight. And uh, let's see, what else can we talk about? Anything else? Anybody else wants to throw a comment? Otherwise, I just sit and say. Uh, oh, oh, I see what you mean. Cricket, awesome. Awesome, poking fun. Bo is busy pressing the like button. Da -dum -da -dum. You know, there's an interesting thing. So there's a live webinar I did in this group about 10 days ago, two weeks ago. And I think I looked at it a couple of days ago, it had like almost 700 views in the group of, uh, I probably have like 1,100 people as of right now, less than this. So almost 700 views divided by, what's the percentage of involvement? I also need to watch twice. I'm a number nerd, I need to figure it out. All right, 700 divided by 1,100 just to keep the numbers even, dang it. There we go. 63% engagement. 64 if we round it up. Not bad. I'll have you with that. All right. Again, just speaking to, uh, if, you, if you missed the part on my training on running group specific way that can generate revenue for your coaching consulting business. Um, if you look at my posts, if you look at this, this is a, this is a, what have we got, like six of you viewing, including my wife. This is pathetic, right? But likely it will, it will catch up to about 100, 200 views over the next week. Um, but it's really it's not about that type of engagement. It's about the strategy beyond that. It's not about each individual post and how many people will chime in. It's even not about a bunch of yahoos coming into the group and each posting on their own different topics and distracting people. Uh, again, just thinking differently. And I know that I go against the grain what everybody else will teach you on how to build the group and you've got to build it to 100,000 people, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, there's always value in the, number, in the numbers, but depending on which numbers you actually really care about, right? All right, now I'm rambling. Happy Friday, Cricket. Uh, party time. George, thanks for being here. Hopefully I answered your question. All right, so I talked about uh, why I call myself what I call myself. I talked about money, a little bit where mine come, comes from, and also very simple model for generating substantial amount of revenue if you're a consult consultant and coach. If you're not using that model, uh, I think you really got to go and uh, check with uh, one of those PhD therapists and have your head examined because uh well it's just it works it delivers results it's elegant uh it's fairly doable thanks george for doing the map uh for, for th um, transcribing the thing so it's easy to see and we are done vanessa good to see you here and that's it i'm done all right ladies and gents enjoy your friday party not too horrid but enjoy yourself and i'll see you again I'll probably do a live with some more specific training next week. And until then, here's to your success. Cheers, everyone. Later.